Hi, so my name is Lubos Kotsman, and I would like to talk to you about community feature requests today. It's kind of interestingly named. It's a community feature request for SUSE Linux Enterprise, and I, I will show you on the next slides why is it so. So I've seen that Richard had a bio yesterday, so I will have one as well. Uh, so some forward, forward uh, why do we even do that? Why is it a topic? Why is it uh, a topic now? So the OpenSUSE Leap 15.2 and newer, so newer than 15.2, from now on will utilize the pre-built RPMs from SLEE 15 in order to build a product. And um, this is part of the effort that you may, may heard of. It's called closing the leap gap. And as, as it has some advantages, it has also some disadvantages, such as that we will be more dependent on SLEE than ever. But this actually comes with the concept of having a hybrid distribution based on SLEE. So uh, I will talk a little bit about what maybe not so new changes we have, but what changes are now a little bit more visible than ever before. And you know, what do we think is the right way to approach them? So for those who don't know me, I joined SUSE two years ago. Um, I'm currently, since beginning of the year, release manager for OpenSUSE Leap. Uh, for whatever it means, uh, I used to be a backup release manager for SUSE SLEE 12 SP5, where I could get some inside knowledge uh, of these SLEE processes and how it works and so on. Before I joined SUSE, I was working for, uh, some people could say IBM twice, but it was uh, before the Red Hat was bought by IBM, so it was IBM and Red Hat. And I was also a little bit interested in the uh, Open Stories user group before. So. Focus of the talk will be mainly about um, how do we update or contribute to about 4,000 packages, uh, which will now come as pre-built binaries from SUSE Linux Enterprise into, into Jump as of today and into future leap versions if everything goes well. Um, nothing more than that. This is This is the scope. So what are the challenges or issues that we are trying to address? So first, uh, the existing issue that we have as of today is how to how to update or, or change the uh, packages which are coming from SUSE Linux Enterprise. In Leap 15.2, you would you would call it packages with SUSE SLE origin, and uh, the problem is not contribution to these 4,000 packages by itself, uh, but it's it's every single time when, for example, you need, you want to change one of the Leap packages and you are blocked on one of these packages being, for example, not up to date enough and so on. And this is when it really comes a problem. Um, so I will show you a little bit what we want to do about these. Uh, the next issue is that I, you know, I, I've experienced it many times and I don't think it's the right approach. And that's every single time when we actually receive a community request for one of these 4,000 packages and um, we have to reject it and then it gets processed internally. And then one day uh, a person gets a feedback that it's implemented or he sees an update in Leap. And unless he misuses Bugzilla uh, for, for example, version bumps, we don't have any 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 good communication feedback uh, or feedback loop for for keeping you know requester up to date with the news. So this is the third item that I would like to address. And the overall idea is that we shouldn't make it any more difficult to to change than it was in Leap 15.2. And uh, a little bit more about that on the next slide. So I've already said that some of these issues are the issues that we already have. They just get more visible, right? And um, when I was looking at the concept of, of Jump, and uh, also I had a little bit of luck to work on the partner workflows for, for the SUSE automotive effort, I actually realized that it shouldn't be any more difficult for OpenSUSE Leap contributor to submit patch or update, um, you know, or update request or a package uh, in, in SLE. So he's unblocked on his uh, community work, let's say. Then it is for Parton to um, get certain update into C to get his software stack working. Uh, software stack working. It, sh it should be easier, or at, you know, maximum the the same same difficult, let's say, but not more. And if if it would be, then I think that we did a really bad job. So how do we approach it? Um, so you've seen that we are rejecting SRs because people simply can't commit or send submit request into, into IBS. And we want to fix that. So we want people to be able to get their submission into IBS without actually rejecting the, the original submission. 
And I will show you how to do that uh, in a way which is not breaking any sort of certifications that, that SUSE has. Um, and the other 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 thing is that uh, not all the contributions come in form of patches. Some of them are just, hey, can you please update this package? Uh, you know, so I can update my package. And uh, person is not interested in submitting patch, you know, for the sleep part of the work, but he still wants to get it done. And uh, we want to give people the official tool to do so because in the end, when when we have to process the change in sleep, it has to be Jira. And uh, it's maybe a little bit controversial. You will see on some of the changes that we have with this, but I feel like it's the easiest that we actually give uh, community the same tools that our partner have to to request exactly the same thing. So I believe, um, you know, I'm not comparing it with Leap as you say today, but I'm saying with the development model, which is which is going to be used for the future versions, I feel like this combination will be the most effective one. Of course, comparing to com uh, factory, it's still overhead as hell. But uh, you know, if you want a hybrid distribution, I feel like this is the way. So details about the submit request. You've you've heard uh, <laughs> that we will allow people to actually send submissions into into IBS, which is partially true. Uh, so the way how we want to approach it is that people simply submit submission against uh, a single project, which will be future leap fifteen three, let's say, or today jump fifteen two, and let's say. That they they want to update package jump uh, bash sorry so they will basically submit the submission against bash in jump 15.2 or leave 15.3 and we have some redirection in in a way which can then redirect the submit request to the place of origin of the package so in this case it would be susa slee uh, maybe some update project for bash i guess it, it would be susa slee 15 update in this case uh, and that actually triggers one review for um, susa slee review team susa slee review team is basically open susa release team and, and specific members of open source release team who can actually approve such things. So, you know, it should have some form, it should have some nice uh, nice uh, SR text. There should be a reference of issue, basically the same things that we get for SLEE. If everything looks good, the submission is the same, we just approve it and then mirror it with the OSC plugin internally into IBS. Um, and in this way, there will be a, a bit directional sync of the info. So if a user would write a comment on, on the OBS side, then it will appear in the IBS. And the same thing uh, under certain conditions, which you can see linked on the uh, Wikipedia down below. Um, you know, we are able, we will be able to submit the same information internally outside. Also, all the results of review bots will be synced outside. So in this way, the submission never gets rejected. Uh, it's rather linked to the another submission, and then the uh, state projection, you know, state change is projected uh, back to OBS. So I feel in this way, we provide a little bit more transparency than it was in Leap 15.2. Um, here is an example uh, of what I would do. There is also a screenshot which shows basically the entire workflow of submitting, let's say, update request to Bash. Uh, so when there is some, you know, when people submit requests and then I use this OSC plugin written by Marco, um, OSC jump review, I see all the pending submissions uh, which are awaiting Swissly review. Basically by accepting them, um, I trigger the mirror internally into OBS and then I see a new submit request ID which is already for build Susa DE. Um, here is the screenshot. So you can see on the upper left that a user creates submission. It was a bash update from factory to, to jump 15.2. You can think of it as leap 15.3, for example, if you don't know what jump is. And uh, right, you have the submission here with built open to the org. Creator is me. And then a person actually with, with Suze Slee review permissions or, or, or group membership triggers the review. Everything's fine, except it then it tri triggers the mirror. And then you can see the very same submission in build Suze DE. And the idea is once you accept or reject, it's perfectly fine to reject submissions which are not meeting certain criteria. This happens all the time. Uh, you know, like the resolution or the comment or, or, or question from the review team would go back, then uh, the contributor would be able to, to comment back here that would get synced here. And we would have such a bidirectional communication here. Of course, every single issue will be marked with banner. We have it, it's, it's agreed on the wiki that, that was linked on the previous slide, um, that uh, the submission will be marked, hey, this is public. Um, so, so you know, be, be, be careful what you write. When I discussed this with the security team, there were no concerns about uh, CVEs, 
leaked because you know keep in mind that this has to be initiated by the uh, OpenSUSE leap or jam contributor from there so so we, we expect that they will not just send fixes for CVs and no other you know internal submission will be exposed to public you know in this way it really has to be triggered through this this road um, right um, and I also said that we would like to provide people the access to Jira so what does that mean? Um, by the way, I have currently a pilot of, of, of the program with Neil. We meet once a week. Uh, we review currently open issues. And I have some budget uh, for the pilot, which is five users that we can try to use. And they can see how the tool works, if it's, if it's meeting the expectations, if the communication is transparent enough, or if we are hitting any issues. I personally still feel like we have a way forward for the partner workflow in general. Not as of today, it's it's still better than whatever we had before. I was reporting back in Etherpad, the progress in Jira features. In this way, people can actually see linked issues, and they can see whether the issue is in progress or it's blocked or it's being evaluated and so on. They cannot see internal comments. That's up to Tom actually to to communicate. You know, changes from engineering to community, and then the same way. I know that there are plans to enhance the partner workflow to maybe allow anonymous conversations, and so on. Um, to to you know meet the works council requirements. So, but this is a future music right now. Uh, people can basically do this. Let's have a look on the next slide. So if person is actually added to the OpenSUSE project, uh, the list of people are managed by Tam, that's me. In this case, I can say, well, these five users, these 20 users, these 50 users can, can access access the project and they can open issues they can comment on these issues and you know they will probably want to attend these weekly review meetings just like we do it for another partners um where we would then you know like uh, ask about the update or we would make sure that we make update for engineering we collect info from from requester if if they for some reason don't like the async con uh, conversation in issues which can still happen right because they have comment rights uh, you can see that uh, they will not see the sleet tasks or pm pool tasks at all, uh, they will only see the reference and the status of the change, which is good enough. We can already say, hey, why is it like for five weeks in, in progress? Like, can you figure out more? Sure, let's do it. And keep in mind that this would be mainly used for, for changes which are coming as, as let's say, uh, hey, can you just update this package because I'm blocked on it. I cannot you know, update my package because this is too old. And uh, for packages which are coming as code submissions, we will probably have to create JRS as well. But I suppose that the initial thing would be that a person submits submission, and then we will figure out the Jira later on. But uh, but the this would be like the start point for people who really want to request something to to get unblocked. Um, you can see that Neil was able to comment here, so he's able to log in. Um, if you are familiar with uh, standard time workflow for other partners, it's exactly the same. Mm. So what changes do we have? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry for interruption. There is a question in comment. the chat mm -hmm. from Peter Mladek. He's asking if the review team is able to decide whether some non-trivial changes are acceptable for Ski. I see. Or I see. So one thing, one thing to keep in mind. So uh, the SUSE Sli review team is not the last reviewer in the process. They are like the gate you know the gatekeeping so we are here to make sure that we are not spamming SLI. we are not allowing submissions that just don't have any standard you know that that have like empty sr text and so on but what happens is that you mirror a submission and then it's submitted uh like into you know it's basically waiting to be processed by release engineer or release management uh, release manager for a given release right and there it still has to pass all the reviews so um Keep in mind that what we are only doing is to decide whether we can actually let it go to the process. And then there is a, a many, many other checks which are deciding on the quality and are deciding whether it's a good fit, whether the issue is referenced, whether the bug or Jira is referenced. You know, like we, we are not going to do any loophole here. So it, it, it will be basically like, um, like employee would do it, you know, no difference. It would still have to meet the same thing. But the, the, the idea is that it can be initiated by a person from outside, but we are not going to make it any, any, you know, any less easy than for a regular employee to submit to SLI. It will be basically the same with the difference that there is a sync in between two OBS instances. That's the only extra thing. Does it, yeah. Does it answer your question better? Uh, so hi, uh, here's Jan, actually. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, 
So I think Petr's concern uh, is more about like the maintainer. So suppose we have like internal maintainer for a package, I say I am a maintainer of E2FS procs. Now someone from the community submits some change to E2FS procs. Mm -hmm. Now it gets mirrored into IBS. And mm -hmm. although technically the change can be correct, like it passes all the IBS checks, it can still be like breaking the code, like on the functional level, yeah? In can some I show case. Yeah. So if you go on the previous slide, I'm not sure if it's visible there, but uh, the review that would be open, like when I submitted a bash uh, submit request, and I think that you can actually mm -hmm. look at, at and the in the OBS by yourself by going to, uh, you don't see the request ID. No, it's the, it's the link before. There is an open review for the maintainer, right? Okay. So ma maintainer always, uh, it's not visible, but if you will go to build slash show slash 2020 AD 16, oh, okay. it's exactly the same. If maintainer doesn't submit a submission, right, for a package, it's still like pending the maintainer review that will be open. It, uh, in my case, it was Werner who was asking, hey, what is this? Like, we don't want to update bash to version 5 and sleep 15. And uh, I so, see. yeah. Cool. Yeah, that, that I guess was the substance of the question. Exactly, exactly. And then basically you as a maintainer, you can write, if you if you follow the wiki, I, I was suggesting at public, you know, like, hey, this doesn't seem right. Like, can we do it a little bit differently? You can mm -hmm. have the communication with maintainer, but cool. it's not like we will reject it and this communication will happen completely outside of his reach, right? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, so then that's oh. great. Okay, thanks. Good point. I know that if oh, I do... That's... Uh -huh. That's uh, actually not what happens because sometimes the review is not triggered and uh, maintainers uh, don't get to review a maintain maintenance update. And for submit requests, maintainers don't review them at all. Okay, so can I recommend you one thing? If you have any concern, there is a Jira for it, which, which is still in progress. It's not fully finished. Like we can mirror it. I think it's, wait a second, mirroring. Uh, OBS 63, that's the feature, you know, that's the Jira, Jira issue for the feature request. And you can comment your concerns there. Like if you want to make sure that the maintenance review is always triggered, we can have like, a, you know, check for it. Like it will assert if it's not, for example, if this is your concern. And in this way, we can make sure that every single time when it's created, mirrored, there is uh, a, you know, review for maintainer. If you feel like you will be more confident about it, I feel like this is the least evil that we can do, right? Just make sure that the rejection, uh, it will not be, well, you have to mirror it first, but if it wouldn't trigger the review, we can try to force, re you know, force add review or, or do something, just make sure that it's there. And I feel this is a very valid concern. So please, please feel free to add it to the feature. Um, right. So any more questions before I go to challenges, because then it will be like just for you sites and open discussion. Um, Okay. Mm -hmm. Go for it, Michael. Can you write the Jira number somewhere? Like yes, yes, sure. I will send. Yeah, I think it's OBS 63, but let me. Again, people uh, on public videos don't like that because this is something that they cannot see. But if we would link it to partner project, they could see it as linked issues. Mirror, yeah, OBS 63. And Michael, you have it in the chat. Okay. So I will not share the internal links in the chat, which is going to be public. That just wouldn't make sense. It would annoy people. Uh, so the challenges. SUSE Leap project structured is, is like a little bit different than, than open SUSE Leap, right? You all know that. So Leap was done in a way that we always copy project to project and there is no inheritance in between these two. And now you have SUSE Leap 15, which basically inherits like more than 60% packages from the initial release or the update stream for the initial release. So um, this is tricky because when a person believes that he's sending update of bash, let's say for, for open SUSE Leap 15.3, in fact, he's actually sending a maintenance update request for a bash which is coming for from SUSE Leap 15 update, right? And that's something that people don't see uh, and they will actually see it in the submission because if you, if you check the screenshot before, um, you can actually see uh, where the submission is really coming to or, or what's the destination project. And yes, see, you can see that it's the 15 update and this is on the public side because these projects are mirrored. I'm not sure if you know that, but they are actually mirrored as part of closing the lead gap. We mirror sources and binaries, both of it. Um, there is some blacklist for live patching, but 
it's it's essentially identical. Thing happens on every single build event uh, of the package from the project in in, in IBS. So yes, so this is tricky because what it means for me. So in the end, there will have to be a feature, right? Uh, so let's say person wants to update it to bash five. I know that it's not a good idea because people have some expectations like customers, we shouldn't change bash, but let's say it's a theoretical update. We want to do that. And uh, what it means that we have to have ECO for this, unlike, uh, you know, if it would be an update for, let's say, you know, latest developed service pack, let's say SP3, we can always fork the package, but this is not something that we should do on a regular basis. We should always try to make sure that we have as little code streams as possible. This is also why we create CTLG. It's it's basically to make sure that we have less code streams, not more. And so I feel like we should keep this idea and we can always do fork if it makes sense, but let's let's try to avoid it, right? And this is something that people will now see, actually. They will not only like hear about it in the chat, but they will see, oh, whoa, why, is, why there is a maintenance, you know, like, uh, update incident or whatever it's called uh, for for package in, in like uh, Leap 15.2. So now they will actually see why is it so. Uh, next thing, uh, so let's say that we start, you know, like as part of unification, packages are the same, sources are the same, so let's build it in Sli, let's reuse it in Leap. The problem is that not all packages are shipped in Sli. And so if it's not shipped in any product, it's used as a build requires only, like in the build route, that's actually really easy because we usually don't need ECO to update such package because it's not released anywhere, like we just use it. And then, uh, you know, Leap consumes future, Leap consumes the pre built binaries. But uh, in this case, like it may happen that, for example, the binary is consumed by, let's say Suma or any other layered product, layered product is like, you know, on top of SLI. Um, so that's a problem because they may have like different code drop deadlines, right? Uh, what happens if they're like uh, maybe four days before GM or, or or some, you know, maybe FCS, like they probably don't want to update the package now. So the problem is also to figure out where is the RPM shift. I usually use SEC for it uh, during the review. And that's actually very useful because then you can say, well, this is used by, you know, like SUSE storage. So maybe we should check with these guys if they are finally changing it. And this is the extra mile that we have to do. And that's that may not be visible to contributor. So this is something that we have to fight. Uh, the next thing, uh, I've seen this concern already. And this is uh, that these Jira accounts are paid, right? It's, it's uh, you know, this is a commercial software and it comes with, uh, bunch of accounts which which we which SUSE has to pay for. And right now it's I, I really I call it a sponsored by SUSE, but SUSE pays for these accounts. Some people don't like that fact. And uh, but I feel like since it's a tool which is really used to update these uh, sleep packages, whatever we come up with, if we want to, you know, maybe mirror these requests in progress, open SUSE or, or so, it will just complicate the fact that in the end it has to be still Jira, right? Um, so I, I really look at it, can we use the tool which is really used for requesting these requests rather than use an extra layer of that would have to be approved by Works Council because it may actually sync some, you know, employee data outside of uh, outside of the approved tool, which is another complication. So for this, I, I feel like uh, as long as it's not a problem for a company to sponsor this for OpenSUSE for the contributions that they're actually putting back to SLI, I feel it's the simplest thing that we can do. Uh, the next problem that I've seen like very recently is what sort of uh, requests we want to actually track. So the original idea was, hey, I need to have this fixed in, you know, or updated in SLI, so I'm unblocked on the leap side, and these requests are like we want them, and as long as it makes sense, uh, let's do it. In some cases, you know, a simple update of library can trigger 100 a rebuild of 100 packages. Um, let's talk about libcdio, I think was the case that was not 100, but about 25, but it's still something that shouldn't happen, for example, during the you know maintenance phase of the product, but it should rather be done um, in, uh, let's say, beta phase of, of new service pack. So this is another issue that people may actually hit, and they are not used to it from Leap because nothing happens if we rebuild 50 packages in Leap, right? Especially, I'm not talking about maintenance updates, but about, you know, about development of the new service, uh, sorry, new new release. But in SD cases, it usually means that it can be actually a you know maintenance update request, which would introduce 50 new well, you know, updates for 50 packages, which is unwanted. Uh, so we have to find compromise about the implementation of these features. Um, and yeah, the next thing is, and that's very crucial. Um, when I mentioned code drop deadlines for different products, like we still have to keep in mind that SLI has their own deadlines. And if I would set uh, set the 
beta drop deadline to let's say i don't know june but the code drop deadline for equivalent milestone and sleeve would be in may like we have a problem because these submissions will not be just taken they will be rejected uh, so i feel like our since we actually are closer than ever before. Our schedules needs to be basically, I'm not saying equal because we don't have the same milestones, but they really need to be reasonably close. And uh, we need to figure out mapping that works and, and you know, make sure that community can uh, is aware when, when the deadlines are there, when when and what sort of types can uh, what sort of packages can be updated when. And this just needs to be working otherwise uh, we will we will see a lot of problems hey the deadline was on friday and i submitted it on thursday and they still rejected it so i really want to avoid such situations and i'm pretty sure that there is not many yeah so the improvements that we already know uh keep in mind that this is a starting point right uh, this is a brand new development model that we are proposing and um like this is not the end state we, it will improve uh, the communication in jira for me i've seen it um now see it with open source i've seen it with automotive uh, the communication is limited we want to improve that and this is the plan for jira team it's just uh, not going to happen this year we will revisit this topic like on maybe somewhere next year let's see so don't expect it anytime soon but i feel like the direction itself sounds good like i this is something that i would expect from the partner setup and um, the next thing is Right now, how it works. Uh, so every single partner project, you know, like we cannot let other partners see each other's requests. This is just not how the the setup works. So it's it's not the same. Uh, it's the same with OpenSUSE projects. So only actually people who have uh, access to the OpenSUSE partner project can see these requests. And I feel since these are community requests, they should be basically public. Um, that may be a problem in our case but we need to be as close to it as possible. And I can imagine how other partners could be, you know, and I've seen it already, that um, we have a community request and, and five other partners want it as well, for example. So so can we maybe make it, you know, like transparent at the beginning so the communication can happen before we actually start implementation. And uh, this is something that I would love to see because I see a huge benefit in it. And I feel like the role of OpenSUSE would be a little bit, you know, like it would step up basically. It would be, it would become more visible. Uh, we would treat it. Uh, we would treat OpenSUSE as a more important partner in this case because you know, like it's it's like catalyst, or, or I'm not sure if the word is right, but it, it's like proxy for for these requests. So I would love to see it going this direction. Um, so what are your thoughts? Keep in mind there is one thing. I, I know that for people who are used to you know like just submit to factory for example where everything is transparent and you don't have to go through ECO reviews and so on that this seems like huge overhead but given the fact how leap is evolving and what the development model is that it's actually you know like based on SLEE literally not the other way uh, I feel that providing the same tools that we provide to our partners to actually get their changes to uh, to SLEE is not a bad idea And this is the last slide, so uh, any discussion is highly welcome. Ah, I see a comment from Nikolai. Yeah, the um, the problem is, so SLE is also open source project, right? But uh, it's also with paid support, that may be the difference. And keep in mind that this change requests are in fact for leave. Most of them I expect, and there may be a case that a person wants to get fixed something in SLE as well from community because he works for a company, something he may use it. Uh, I didn't really think about these, you know, like use cases, but um, in most cases the request is in fact for leave, but it happens to be a request for SLE because, you know, uh, it's it's SLE RPMs in the end that we will use in leave. So there may, it may not be that easy. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like if if you if you offer paid support for the product, maybe we would not be able to get the free free accounts. And so far, I was just trying to make sure that we make the setup as easy and as you know, like no exceptions, but the same as the other partners. So um, we 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 do not bring any complications, and we can get requests done reasonably soon. Um, oh, I see. Okay, thank you, Richard. There we have an answer.
So uh, regarding the accounts, as I said, for the pilot, I have approval of five accounts. If somebody's interested, like, you know, so everybody can join the uh, Monday meetings. If you go to Wiki for, uh, or just go to Jump Wiki, you will be able to click through. You will see when the meetings are happening. It's Monday, I believe, 1.30 p.m. Uh, UTC. So that would be half past two CEST. Um, we, you know, I'm sharing the, the Kanban board, as you've seen it on the screenshot. We go for requests, we write updates, then I take the homework, and then I talk to engineering teams, make sure that we are on the track. And uh, if you want, you know, like if you are a community member and you are watching this on YouTube, you can just 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 contact me on RSC, and I'm maintaining a list of accounts. And and if you want to be in the pilot, you want to see how it works, how the communication works, how the submit request works, like feel free to free to join. We will be really happy to have you. Good. Uh, any more questions? Like if somebody thinks that this is like complete uh, overkill, let me know. But uh, I'm always keeping in mind the the development model that 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 is seems to happening for for future versions of Leap in mind when I'm thinking of what's proposed. And there it makes sense for factory. This would be you know huge overkill. Any more questions or any concerns that maybe were not raised on on on, on the slides as a challenge? Okay, if not, then uh -huh. I think generally this is a very good idea and uh, it will definitely help because right now that was really a bit of a problem for Leap that for people from outside uh, it was kind of black box. You just had to wait what will be in the next release and what will not. So mm -hmm. definitely an improvement. Uh, maybe one of the challenges would be setting the expectations because uh, we may have some reasons why something should not be updated or should why we don't want or cannot uh, for reasons which are not easily easy to explain to outsiders. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, uh, I would say until now, the expectations were actually none. So even that will be an improvement. So. I agree. This is not the first time that I hear this, so I have the same opinion about this. Thank you, Michal. Uh, I see that Andreas is actually saying that uh, account request will make this process less open compared to opening Bugsnar or OBS account. So, Andreas, if you open OBS account um, and I add you to the list, like you can already access Jira. Uh, it's documented on that wiki, so this is easy. Like it's it's not like you know. You don't have to fill anything in Jira. You have an OBS account, and if I add you, you have access to Jira. The the thing is that if you feel it's it's more difficult than opening a bug, for example, um, keep in mind that in the end, to change sleep package, like update version of software with you know like no obvious bug fix, for example, I know that there are bug fixes in the updates for sure, but like if you clearly see that we want to update patch to version five, for example like this will not be done based on the bug unless it's sneaked in, right? So in the end, it would it will have to be Jira. And you know if we try to create something else and then create Jira based on that, that's what we have right now. And as you heard, this is not very transparent because a person has to manually copy all the information. I'm not saying that I, do, I don't have to do copying in Jira, but you can already at least see the linked issues and you can see state on them. And uh, since there are weekly meetings that we already have, and we had two in the row already, um, I feel like the transparency will be improved. Ah, right, yeah, okay, I see, for outsiders. I still feel it applies for outsiders as well, like. Ah, yeah, so Lukash is actually talking about, I, I believe that I remember this name correctly, that's the that's the uh, DNF request, yes. Um, this is a valid request, right? It was it was traced by Neil. Uh, we want to consider that, and then you know, like the 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 thing is, do we want to track requests for our next generation product line? Um, I'm not sure. Like right now, I told you the intention is to make sure that we do not we we are unblocking people to contribute to Leap, and since uh, the future generation product is not there, this is not exactly the purpose that was intended. But it's still you know this is the only place where we can track it as of today. Um, so I'm. That's why I wrote, I think, on the previous slide that we have to really decide what requests to track right here. What type of feature request do we want to keep track of? Yeah, this is this is basically it. Uh, the intention is not to create like never-ending issues for uh, 
like engineering. Um, you know, if there are concerns, like I have a bunch of features myself, like butter FSRO devices that I know that will probably not get done ever. And um, the intention is really to unblock people. So we don't want to misuse it. And if there are, if, if engineering, thank you, uh, Michal, if engineering sees it as misused, we have to change that. Like, this is not the intention. We want to make sure that if people get like open source requests, they know that somebody is blocked and, you know, like they want to contribute, they cannot, and, and they would like, they, they would like your help to get it done. Paul, uh, any more questions? Andreas, if you want to discuss this, we can also discuss it like offline. If, if you have any concerns uh, so far, this is the proposal. Or you can come on the next Monday meeting and you can see how it's done, uh, if it's changed for other people, if you have some I'm friends who would like. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not sure cool. if you noticed the Guillaume's comment in the chat. Ah, I didn't. No plan for architecture unsupported by SLE so far, thinking of RMV7. So, Guillaume, uh, that's perfectly fair feature. Well, you know, on one hand, like ARM could raise this partner request, right? If he raises this open to the request, like it's basically the same road. Like um, there is no simplification. And uh, it would be a request. I'm just not saying if it will happen. It has to, you know, like this is up to company to consider whether it pays off in the end, right? To, to, to do that. Andreas, I did not, but I can. Uh, I received would like to have mm -hmm. a comment regarding the OpenSUSE dash three the DNF. Go for it, Andrea. Andrea. I think in the form, in the current form, it doesn't make much sense because it's basically the request that other people do start implementation, implementing lots of functionality, which is still lacking in DNF at the moment. Mm -hmm. This is most likely not a successful request. Therefore, what could be done in any case is, of course, is enhancing DNF on the same level and afterwards creating a, a Jira ticket to switch defaults or to adapt. Exactly. Yeah, but that's maybe the challenge of the first of the SLE release review team to find out and yeah, give this feedback earlier than later. I agree, I agree. So in some cases like uh, we, don't, we don't want to track upstream development in these Jiras, right? That's, that's for sure. Uh, so let's not use it for that. It was just an idea that, you know, that want to be shared. And like, um, in that case, it would be great. I originally created a Jira outside of the open to the uh, pool. And then I retrospectively added that Jira, right? So again, maybe we shouldn't track it as, as partner request, but as an idea, you know, like maybe, maybe not in Jira and whatever place for next generation products. But you are right, the development, uh, the upstream should happen. And then if it's ready and we want to adapt it, like then we would get the Jira. That would be ideal solution or approach to the problems in general. Okay. So let me check uh, Andreas's comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about, uh, so, so the account, the amount of accounts, okay. So Andreas, don't send me this information then during the call, please. Um, any more questions? Okay, then thank you very much and have a nice day. One one question, uh, uh -huh. uh, Lubosh. I I feel a little embarrassed asking this question. I, I think I should know because it's been discussed at length. But if you can uh, recall me, how does this fit the community request to leap into our factory first policy? There is uh, Richard that also always explains us if you want something to get into the stream of features we have, goes to factory, then trickles down to leap. But you are saying you can request directly to leap. I know that's a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. So let me let me explain you how it looks on the uh, if we would start with factory SD and leap. Where does this fit in? So uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise follows the factory first model, right? So whatever you want to integrate in SLE, like should be in factory first. That's the same. And since leap is now actually utilizing the SLE binaries, you could say that leap is actually for four thousand of these twelve thousand packages in total we need to make sure that the change is in SLE, right? And then there is nothing like in leap after, there is that it's in SLE and then leap gets it as, as a pre-built RPM, right? And uh, 
So you you could say sleep first, and then sleep has the factory first. So so if we have breakfast for sleep, it needs to be in factory, then then committed to sleep. Once it's in sleep and it's released as a maintenance update, or or you know it's it, it made its way to the GA product, for example, during the new service pack development. Um, it will basically appear in leap. Um, does it answer the question? So it, it's, it needs to be in factory, then it needs to get into SLE. And then for these 4,000 of packages, once it's SLE, it will be automatically in leap as well without any upcoming submission. Like we will just take the RPM as it is. We have always ways to fork these packages. Like, uh, you know, in some cases you want to have custom branding, right? In some cases, we just need to have a feature we just cannot make it to SLE because of licensing issues. So for these reasons, we can have our own forks. But again, these forks need to respect factory first. And just, just to give you an, um, some, some sort of idea about how many forks we have as of today in Jump, I think that maybe using fork is a bad term because we have about 60 packages in the project. Most of them will be key related or zero zero products, you know, the, the product metadata. But um, we have fork, for example, for GDB, I can imagine that we will have some more forks uh, for some vert stack as well. Um, so these wouldn't have the sleeve first policy, they would have the factory first, but we always try to reduce the amount of code streams. So we would really like to, you know, have whatever we can from factory. And, you know, for these 4,000 packages, if we can get the exact same versions from SLE as they are, we actually reduce the maintenance overhead. So this would be very preferred. But everything needs to be in the factory. Like we are not taking any any changes that are not for you know, with the exception of like again product metadata. Good. Any more questions? Thank you. By the way, thanks for asking because I have to do some training about this as well for new hires. Uh, okay, then have a nice day and enjoy the remaining talks.